Torah, Prophet, Torah Prophecies Series 3, Volume 3. Okay. Torah Prophecies Series 3, Volume 3. Now, Ezekiel, in chapter 18, Ezekiel talks about the soul that sins shall die, and the son shall not be held accountable for the sins of the father, and the father shall not be held accountable for the sins of the son. If someone who's righteous turns to wickedness, their righteous deeds will be forgotten. If someone who's wicked turns to righteousness, their uh, wicked deeds will be forgotten. And that's essentially the message. And at the end of the chapter, repent and turn from your sins. God has no delight in the death of the wicked. Repent and turn from sins and be righteous. God maintains with, through Ezekiel, be righteous. Okay. Now, a Noahide generally knows consi considered righteous by the Rainbow Torah's standards. So, um, that's approximately emulates the kind of things a Noahide should be doing also. We should be turning from our sins as God exhorted Cain and being righteous. Okay, now, essentially this is a sort of a sermon from Ezekiel, chapter 18, a, a polemic, a, a diatribe, a lesson. And it's it's part of the prophetical writings, but it's mostly, it's not really prophesying any future events, but it is a polemic. And as a basic teaching of turn from sin and obey rules, it's correct enough theology. So, um, you'd probably call, for the most part, Ezekiel chapter 18, kosher and acceptable enough theology. In the Ten Commandments, there's somewhat, to a degree, perhaps contradictory elements to what Ezekiel's stressing at, where, where it teaches that the, uh, the son shall inherit the guilt of the father. Because, um, just a sec, I'll read that out. Exodus chapter 20, the Ten Commandments, when uh, Moses receives the tablets of the Ten Commandments in stone from God, which he chiseled out himself apparently, but, um, <laughs> okay. Exodus 20. Uh, verse 4, you shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents, to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. So, children are certainly punished for their parents' sins. The Exodus chapter 20 makes it clear enough that God punishes your children. If, you, if you've been a sinner family, and it's within the context of an idolatry rule, no idolatry, that command there. If you've um, been involved with idolatry, um, God doesn't mind punishing your children. Um, the reality is, though, that what might be in mind there is that They've inherited that idolatry and uh, going on with it. And God might not be clearing the guilt and turning that soul away from that idolatry which his father or mother or parents have gone into and saying whatever, sort of punishing them without clearing the debt somewhat. But when it comes right down to it, I think Ezekiel 18 probably is in harmony. I think it sounds about right that, look, if, if the son has actually turned from his father's sin, he won't be held accountable. So if he's turned from those sins and those wickedness, then his soul shall live, and he won't be punished for that sin, I would imagine. If he just walks on with life, I guess, then he'll be punished for his father's sins. And you, you inherit the guilt of your parents, potentially. So really, what as, as Daniel does, the prophet, he confesses the sins of his nation Israel in some of the latter chapters of Daniel. I think chapter, chapter 9, I think, um, you need to confess that what you've inherited from your family, if it's been idolatry, is a sin. And you need to turn from that. And if you turn from it, according to Ezekiel's teaching, you shall live. 
And I think that those ideas religiously generally make sense. Um, we should obey rules of righteousness as religion teaches. As Torah teaches, we should obey the rules of righteousness. So Ezekiel's polemic, for want of a better word, in Ezekiel 18, I think that's probably kosher enough teaching. And who knows? I mean, in Torah prophecies, we question whether this stuff is from God. But I'm satisfied enough with Ezekiel 18 that it's godly, at, at the very least.